candy. Shaft. So, <laughs> I was actually looking for movies to review, and uh, I was actually going to do Shaft, uh, you know, the 1970s black exploitation film. I was also going to do like a series of Shaft films, but then, like, when I started searching for material for it, this movie came up, and I was like, I, I don't know what this is. <laughs> I don't know what this is. I've never heard of it before, and Naomi Watts is in it. What is this movie? So I decided to pop into my uh, nearest, The Exchange, which is a, a place here that you can get like use video games and movies and music. And uh, maybe I'll do a video where I take you on a trip there because um, it's like my favorite place ever. So they had it for a buck and I bought it and I was surprised. <laughs> I'm not gonna say I was pleasantly surprised, but I was surprised by what this film thinks it is. So The Shaft came out in 2001. I'm, I don't know if it got a wide release. What are you doing? I don't know if it got a wide release. Um, not really sure, but it, it went by the name of Down. I guess, I guess The Shaft was for, the, Shaft was for uh, the DVD release, but Down was actually the original release and it's a, it's a Dutch American co-production so the director is from the Netherlands or Holland and it feels like <laughs> this movie goes into the category of it's so bad it's good like there are parts of it where it's like the, it's like parts of it where it's like this movie is really trying to be a film there are parts where the camera work is, it, he does a lot of steady cam, so the camera's constantly doing this and it's constantly swinging around, it's constantly like going behind the people, it's always focusing on one person and then just sort of going around them and trying to catch their reaction or whatever it's trying to do. I'm not sure what it's trying to do, but he, his camera work is really nice. I, I just don't think it works for the film that he's trying to make. The director's name is Dick Mass, which, <laughs> Richard Mass, I don't think that's his real name. And I looked everywhere, like on Wikipedia and, and IMDb, and I, I don't see anything else. So I'm assuming that his name is Richard Mass. Um, but Dick Mask, is, Dick Mass is one of the most masculine names I think I've ever heard. Uh, Dick Mass. I mean, come on. I mean, it's, it's almost like he found out what he thinks Americans would like, and he did that. So he visited New York once or twice and he did that. You know, it wasn't a real true immersion into the identities of these people or New York City or anything. It's just sort of a foreigner's take on what New Yorkers act like, what they sound like, how they move, how they dress. Uh, the fact that nobody's nobody seems to look like they've taken a bath. Like, <laughs> it has that energy to it. Um, and I kind of love that. I kind of love the fact that this this uh, Dutch guy came to the United States, went to New York specifically, and uh, said, oh, okay, well, this is how they act. <laughs> okay, so this movie is about a building <laughs> where, how do I describe this? It's about a building, the Millennial Building, which is not... I don't know if they could use like the names of the buildings in this movie. They never say New York um, in it, but the Millennial Building is supposed to be sort of like the the Empire State Building. It's sort of built like it, it has the, the architecture and everything. And uh, this is clearly a set, which is fine. Um, they only use like maybe one, two, three, four sets, five sets in this movie. They switch some stuff around. They use the camera work to sort of get around stuff. Anyway, it's about this building that has an elevator in it that is killing people and has been killing people for some time now, evidently, because you find out that uh, one of the uh, 
operators or one of the maintenance men for the elevator has died and now they've replaced it with this new guy who is just some random nobody that they throw into this film and he's fine he's he's sort of as interesting as a wooden box but he's fine the star of the film and the person that they put on the dvd box the dvd cover is naomi watts of course because i guess the dvd may have come out after she did uh the ring which was a huge film for her but naomi watts has had an interesting career i mean she's done interesting stuff like the ring and tank girl and then <laughs> she she did stuff like Babe, Pig in the City. It's it, what is this career? I don't know what the the consensus is on her acting because here it's a little it's a little funny. It's it's a little funny. She's fine in it. But comment below on what the consensus uh, is on Naomi Watts. I mean, and other people are in it. Like Michael Ironside is in it and. For I mean, his part is this big, but all of a sudden he's supposed to have a big part. Anyway, I'm like, nope, I'm not going to get into that. But Ron Perlman is in it, which actually shocked me. It's almost like, were you just in the Netherlands when they were filming? And they were like, hey, Ron Perlman, do you want to be in this movie? Or do you also buy money? Because, my God, this movie is batshit. So this movie has a lot of Canadian and Dutch actors in it. Outside of the clear American actors in it. It has a lot of Canadian Dutch actors in it, which means there's going to be a lot of ADR because they want them to sound like New Yorkers. And New York and th their version, I don't know, they didn't get people who could actually do New York accents. They got people who could do versions of New York accents, which actually sounded more like people in Boston had having a stroke. But, it, and everybody's talking out the side of their mouth, like, <laughs> Come on, buddy. Like, what are you talking about? Like, it, it sounds like a cartoon. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Home sweet home. <laughs> oh, boy. Lead us to that drink pipe. So the early 2000s CGI kind of gets a pass because everybody was sort of playing around with CGI after Jurassic Park, but people really wanted to do too much. So when you, the first shot of the whole movie is a CGI city. They're clearly not flying into New York City and then flying directly into this building and curving around. Like there, there are obvious shots where there are, it's obvious CGI. Those are the kind of parts that make the movie bad. Now the parts that make it great are the parts that kind of are unintentionally funny. So the elevator killing people, I mean, come on a killer elevator. <laughs> I mean, it's no Westworld, okay? Like, <laughs> it's no, you know, Ghosts in the Machine or anything that's actually interesting. It's a fucking elevator. And you have this guy that's supposed to be the, the scientist and, and he puts a, puts bio, he bioengineers AI to control the elevator. And that's supposed to be like his scientist. What is the end game here? Are you trying to make an elevator that works on its own, that talks to you? What is the end game? We never know what the actual end game for this bioengineered elevator is. That is just, it's just something that we just have to say, okay, well, he did this. <laughs> every mad scientist in every good movie or films in the past that have created that trope have an end game. There's a reason, you know, Frankenstein says, I don't want to just create a human life I want to cure disease. I want to uh, bring people uh, back to their loved ones. They're, it's insane. But we understand why we sympathize with, with Dr. Frankenstein. This guy, first of all, we don't know who he is till halfway through the movie. And then once we find out who he is and what, his, what he's doing, it's like, why? Why? What for? Like, there's no reason for it as a mad scientist. There's no reason to do the thing that you're saying you're doing. Also, I don't necessarily believe that a building that has death after death after death on the same elevator would remain open just to make money. It seems like it would cost them more money to have more people die in it. Case in point, a blind man is murdered by this elevator. I'm not gonna go into details, but let's just say that the elevator eats the blind man and his service dog, which just hurts my heart. But he, he kills the blind man who was an asshole and we're supposed to be like, oh my God, <laughs> this guy's an ass, kill him. 
but that's, that's true for everybody. Everybody in this film is horrible. I don't want anybody to live. <laughs> I don't remember anybody's name. I just watched it. I have, I have no recollection of um, anybody's name. I, I don't remember anybody's name. All I remember is that this elevator is ruthless. This elevator will kill a kid. It will cl clearly, clearly kill a dog and a blind man and probably tried to kill those pregnant women but didn't wasn't powerful enough, I guess. It was the beginning of the movie. Um, and it kills, it kills a few more people and they remain open. I think, okay, so I think <laughs> I'm with them on remain, on the building remaining open up until this elevator kills everybody in the, I mean, every, it has, it's a tourist building, so it has all these tourists in this elevator and it kills everyone in it. I would have counted 20 people in this elevator, 15 maybe, and it somehow grew a trap door <laughs> to which it's flying up and it drops all these people out of the trap door. Children, women, old people, didn't care, killed all of them. Now, that is an elevator I can get behind <laughs> that just magically creates a trap door and kills everybody. I really don't have anything else to say about it. Um, the ending is, of course, they destroy the elevator. They destroy the brain that is controlling the elevator. It's really not else, nothing else to say about it. The CGI is crazy. The music doesn't know what movie it's in. <laughs> I, I, I mean, the director is clearly out of his mind because the kills in this movie are great. The decapitation and the dog killing and the... They didn't really, it didn't really kill the kid, but then when it kills all those tourists, it kills like five children. <laughs> I fucking love this movie. It's so bad. It's so bad, but it's so good. It's bad like Samurai Cop and Troll 2. Those are the movies that you sit and you watch and you laugh and you can commentate through them. And no one's mad about you commentate through them because it's bad. And everybody sitting here knows it's bad. And that's fantastic. I think. I don't know. I think I'm going to give this move. I want to give it an A. <laughs> I give it an A. I want to give it an A, but it's not. It's not an A. It's not an A. I didn't give American Mary an A. So. <sighs> okay. So as a movie, it's a D. As an enjoyable good time, it's a solid C+. I recommend seeing The Shaft. It is not available anywhere. I have looked everywhere for it online and on streaming. It's nowhere. You're going to have to buy this on DVD, and it's pretty cheap. I haven't seen it on Amazon, but if I can find it for a dollar in my local used shop, you probably can find it online for even cheaper. If you're looking for a good evil technology film, then I definitely suggest finding Westworld with Yul Brynner or 976 Evil or Demon Seed. Those are films about technology and definitely technology of the time that would definitely wet your whistle on evil technology. The Shaft is good for a good sit and key. I, I, I recommend it. Find it. Buy it. Have it in your collection. It's fantastic and bad. So that's it for Monday Movie Night. Thank you for tuning in to Penny Candy. Again, I'm your host, Damian Nova. Please like, subscribe, uh, hit the bell, comment, do all that stuff. Keep up with us. Uh, I will be posting new videos on our Facebook page, exclusive for our Facebook followers, called uh, Vintage Video Rewind, or Vintage Video Review, Vintage Video Review, Vintage Video Review. <laughs> Where I will have, well, me and a special guest will be talking about uh, old vintage music videos and how insane those are. Uh, so check out our Facebook page. I'll put the link below. Uh, I guess that's it. Support. Candy, candy.